everyone, so it's the eve, well, nearly midnight, of probably one of my most important scans in eight years, because this is the scan where we know what my future is. Obviously, my first brain tumour eight years ago, we then thought we had five years clear, we did not, there was mistakes made, and it had actually been progressing that entire time, but as you know, eventually I stabilised it like I did last year, and then since then it's been progressing. Now, when I came off my RSO to go away for a couple of months abroad, and I lost my tolerance, and also I completed the 90 days of the uh, Rick Simpson oil protocol, so my dogs are making noises, my little babies, and when I came off it, no longer stable, progression. And like I said on my previous videos, with the panic here as well, we cleared the brain tumour so quickly that the dead brain tumour cells got eaten by the original tumour, oh well, the second tumour, got eaten by the active cancer and it became active again. So what we're hoping for now is a good result in the morning. Now, they told me I could never stop this cancer without chemo and radiotherapy and even then it's not a long-term solution, it always comes back. 17 years is the average uh, survival rate with uh, combining them both, but it always comes back and then you do it again and again and it destroys you. It destroys your body, your immunity, everything, uh, your spirit, uh, everything. So I, I don't ever want to go there no matter how hard this gets. And so we changed to the care oncology, the repurposed drugs, and I'm back on my RSO. I'm building up to a gram a day now. I'm only on about a quarter of a gram because it's making me very high but sorry my throat I keep getting a fog in my throat I'm unable to talk fogs are not part of the protocol it's just very worried about tomorrow and so I just want to share how I'm feeling and what's happening because so many people get so worried and anxious about scans and I just want to be here to tell you that it's very normal I don't sleep till 5 a.m. That's why I've got these big old dark circles under my eyes. I don't sleep. <coughs> I eat a lot. That's fine. My appetite's fine. Excuse me. Sorry. But I just wanted to share with you guys just my worries for tomorrow because of the COVID. My scans have been delayed two months now. This can go one of two ways. This can be by delaying my scans for two, nearly three months. It's given time for this care oncology, repurposed drugs and RSO to start working again. And I'm absolutely praying that I've not just cut off the metabolic pathways which are feeding the cancer, but I've also started to shrink it in the kill phase. So, so I've got itchy nerves. <laughs> I'm going to pick it on video. So we need to enter the kill phase, which is what the RSO comes in. So the metformin, the repurposed drugs, they cut off the... Uh, the, the sugars and stuff entering the brain, the proteins, it's cutting off fats, cutting off every metabolic pathway to stop this. And I realised yesterday, you know, I'm 37 this year, I think, I get confused, but I think so. And I've lived with this brain tumour for eight years, and I've thrived. I've done things I would never dream of, I've achieved things I never dreamed of. My cancer was not a curse to me, it is for so many, but for me it was a blessing because it enabled me to live the life of my dreams and do things I never thought <coughs> because I was on borrowed time. I didn't have 80, 90 years like someone else, you know? I had to do my dreams now, today, because if not, they'd have been taken from me. And whilst it didn't matter, whilst I was dying, did it really matter if I didn't become this cover girl or get in this film or that film? Did it matter? No, because I would have been dead or unable to know who I am if I had the radiotherapy, I would have known my own name. However, due to the protocol that I chose, the, uh, the cannabis oil, I have thrived. I have lived the life of my dreams, and if it all got taken away, there would be no regrets. However, I still have a few more dreams left, and I want to achieve them, which is why I'm praying so hard that this is working. But I feel good, I feel well, even though I don't sleep from anxiety. You know, I, I feel good. I run nearly every day. I feel good. I'm healthy. And I've had worse. <clears throat> There's been a couple of moments over the last year or two where there was no hope. And I lost my faith. And I signed those wretched chemo letters 
twice saying to mum if I'm not stable if I'm no longer winning I will take it for her because she wants me around for a long time and even if it's not the life I choose I could never be that person that stops fighting for my mum because she's my rock and she's my world and she has fought harder than me every step of the way last year we honest to god thought i was going to die i had ambulances most days we think it was purging the cancer just before i became stable i was on the floor shaking throwing up once i threw up blood because it just tore my throat puking so much they took me to a and e and I was in a hospital for three days, just unable to drink, unable to eat. And they wanted to put this sickness box into my arm, which you carry around in a bag. And I said, no way. Am I putting this little box on my body that's going to inject me with an anti-sickness all day, every day, to the point it's not addressing the cause. We don't know why I'm sick. And I will never, ever get that out of my body. Because when do you know you'd no longer need it? And the doctors didn't understand me. So I said no. And I went home and I tried a milkshake. And I spat it out. I sicked it all over my mother. And I smashed the glass on the floor. And so many times my mum had to clean up after my anger and frustration. I punched through a wall. I broke my hand in four places out of frustration that I could not eat. And on my Facebook memories yesterday, I'd celebrated that I ate three chicken nuggets. I know I shouldn't have eaten them. But that's all I ate in a week. My weight was 60 kg. Within a month, I was 40 kg. I did not eat. And then it got to the point I could not drink. I stopped weighing at 40 kg. I was a skeleton. The pictures would shock you. And we thought I was going to die. And my mum cried and she begged and she screamed in my face that I had to eat and I just couldn't. And then I stopped drinking. You know, I would throw up every drink I had. It would just spill out of my mouth. I was throwing up bile and I had ambulances most days and there was nothing anyone could do for me and we think it was just the cancer purging from all the things I did, the cannabis, the hoxie and so on, the clinic from Mexico. I poisoned my body in order to get well, to stabilise myself, to get healthy, which is exactly what chemo is, but I used natural alternatives. My hair fell out, I could sit on my hair, you know, and my skin was rash all over. And I was so sick, but I got better. I eat so much these days. You know, so much food. Today I had a barbecue, and I don't normally eat meat. I normally have vegan alternatives. And I ate for about five people for a party. And I weigh 56 kg again. I'm healthy, I'm fit, I'm strong, I'm building muscle, you know. I got better. Just when we thought that I was going to die, we got better. And then we stabilised, and it was probably the best day of my life. And then even before that, the year before, the doctors gave me one month to live if I didn't start radiotherapy and chemotherapy. One month, and I'm here two years on. So whatever happens tomorrow with my results, we know I've had worse. Those two instances, a month to live, there's no way they can tell me I've got a month to live now. I feel so good. Not well, not a portion of the former Kerry. My fitness, my health, my energy, but I feel healthy. And I probably feel better than a lot of my friends who don't have cancer and don't have the ailments that I have due to the fact they have bad diets. So I will snotty now. What a train wreck. And I'm so thankful to everyone who supports me, who's fundraised, who's saved my life. And I really, really pray that the world who is watching me, looking to me for faith, hope, and all these people that want to see me thriving and surviving this because it means hope for them and their families. I really pray that I've got good news for you tomorrow. I might not update you right away because me and my mum, we need to process this. Whatever happens, we need to attack this. We need to have our next stage of planning. We need to think, what do I do next? Whether it's good or bad. But I will not lose my faith. I will not lose my hope. I will not touch those wretched pharmaceutical drugs. You know, I, I will stay on this path for the rest of my life, no matter how long that is. And so I just wanted to say to you all, thank you. Am I scared for tomorrow? I'm past scared, what's done is done. I can't do any more other than just keep fighting every day to take all these medicines, look at all these boxes of medicines, 
just keep taking them no matter how sick they sometimes make me and hopefully just keep thriving and hopefully I've got some good news for you all so I'll keep you updated sorry for the tears and the snot and the uh, the fogs in here and I'll um, I'll be getting back to you I really feel hand on heart that I am beating this I really feel I don't know if anyone's spiritual spiritual they're into numerology and stuff I'm seeing every sign that I've shrunk this and we've got a phone appointment because you can't even go in oncology because of the COVID and I just so badly want to hold this radio report in my hand and see what the radiographers have said and I want to see my brain on that screen I want to see this tumour and I cannot and that's what's breaking me so in less than 12 hours I will have my results good or bad and if they're bad I just have to hold on to that that I've been in a worse position twice and I've held on and I've got better and I've thrived and I wanted to share that message to all of you as well that maybe if you're worried about results it's not the worst we've had it's not the worst you're gonna have so thank you all and I've been advising lots of people on brain tumors today do share my youtube channel on your social media of anyone who you feel might benefit from learning about cannabis oil and repurpose drugs panicking and everything like that because I saw someone on social media today saying THC doesn't help cancer and I don't want to argue with these fools these sheep you know but I just want to hold my hand up and say I am here alive thriving because of cannabis oil I am pain free I have no 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 pain when I broke my hand like I said a minute ago my friends all said, that's going to hurt when the cannabis wears off. And I said, cannabis never wears off. I am completely pain free. Migraines have gone. I never used to be able to open my eyes each day for pain. And just even jogging now, I could barely walk for each step. It was agony. I mean, the cancer was three quarters of my brain with the swelling, edema and cancerous tumour. And I haven't had migraines in a year. Not one single headache. You know, it's a miracle. Cannabis oil has saved my life. It's given me a quality of life. And I really, really implore everyone to add it into their diet, healthy or not. Had I not known my, can my cancer had grown back for those five years and wasn't using cannabis oil as a preventer, I'd be in the ground now. So please do place your belief in that, even if your belief is not in yourself or in me. And we're going to show the world that this works. So in 12 hours... I will know my fate. Please, please, if you say a little prayer for me and everyone else fighting this, it would mean the world. And I pray that we can all beat this deadly disease. And I'm sending everyone fighting so much love, so much strength, and so much courage. And thank you for the kind words you say about me, that I'm a warrior and, and how much I'm helping the world. Thank you, because I get a lot of abuse for what I do. I get <laughs> snot bucket. I get a lot of abuse for looking so well when I'm a dying girl. So I just want to say that that's proof that cannabis also works because I do not look like a cancer patient and I'm so blessed for that because I've not had chemo. Cancer patients don't look sick. Chemo makes you look sick. Chemo makes you sick. And I'm not saying don't touch chemo, it's everyone's personal. Um, personal decision and choice to make. I just haven't researched it, would not, and haven't seen friends on it. And how many thousands of you have said to me on my page, private messages on here, don't touch it, I would not. But many people have thrived on chemo, and for that, I congratulate you, and I am so happy that you are well. But please do look at your natural alternatives to undo the side effects of chemo and also to improve your immunity and your health. For not just this current virus, but for protect you to protect you from cancer in the future. So those are my little musings. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm joking, and I hope I can update you all tomorrow, depending on what what's happened and how I can tell you. And one thing I don't ever want to tell you all is that I failed, because so many of you are watching me, and so many of you want the hope what I'm giving you and I cannot fail you so good night god bless and sending love and courage to you all goodbye 
Stay safe in these current times, everyone, and you'll see me again soon. Bye.